Thank you for joining me. My name is Pastor Caroline Barclay here in New Glasgow with Master's Hand Ministry. And it's a beautiful sunny day here today in New Glasgow after the storm. Today is um, Sunday, February 6, 2022. And the title of my message today is Salvation is for All. And I'll explain that a little better as we go along. But first, I want to share with you that on Thursday morning when I woke, these were the first words I heard. Almost as if someone was standing in the room and the words were spoken that I could audibly hear them. And these were the words, come, believe, ask and receive and be saved unto glory. Well, well, that was quite a way to wake up when, do, when you come to in the morning and that's the first thing you hear. It sets your day up for a beautiful day in the Lord. So immediately I got up and I wrote those words down because I didn't want to forget them. As I waited for more to come, there wasn't, I didn't hear anything else. So I got up and I started my day, and that was about 8 o'clock, and by 9 o'clock I was sitting at the table, and uh, I wanted to start to write. So I thanked God for those words, and I asked, what should I do with these words? Is this for Sunday, Lord? So then I picked up my Bible and I was willing to write whatever the Lord would show me. <clears throat> I opened my Bible at random, and I came upon Romans chapter 10, verses 5 to 17. That's what my eyes fell to when I opened my Bible. And the title of it is, Salvation is for All. And I'm looking in the Good News Bible. So, hence... That was the reason I titled this message as I did today. Well, now I knew what God was preparing. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for always opening our minds to receive your word. As we wake in the morning, already you are with us. And your voice speaks to us. In the nine words that you gave me on Thursday, you set my day in motion to be excited for this message today. I knew if I just waited, you would direct me to the scripture needed, and you would not fail me. So, let's now bring this message to your people. Amen. <clears throat> if you have your Bibles handy, and I hope you do, I hope that when you come to sit with me in the, in the uh, time frame that's best for you, that you bring your Bible uh, to your chair beside you so that you have it ready. So please open your Bible to Romans chapter 10. And I'm starting in verse 5 and continuing through to verse 17. And all scripture today will be taken from the Good News Bible. So starting at verse 5, let's begin to read. Moses wrote this about being put right with God by obeying the law. Whoever obeys the commands of the law will live. But what the scripture says about being put right with God through faith is this. You are not to ask yourself, who will go up into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Nor are you to ask, who will go down into the world below? That is, to bring, to bring Christ up from death. What it says is this. God's message is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, 
the message of faith that we preach. If you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from death, you will be saved. For it is by faith that we are put right with God, and it is by our confession that we are saved. The scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. This includes everyone, because there is no difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. God is the same for all and richly blesses all who call to him. As the scripture says, everyone who calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. Everyone who calls out to the Lord for help, will be saved. But how can they call out to him for help if they have not believed? And how can they believe if they have not heard the message? And how can they hear the message if the message is not proclaimed? And how can that message be proclaimed if the messengers are not sent out? As the scripture says, how wonderful is the coming of the messengers who bring good news. But not all have accepted the good news, Isaiah himself said. Lord, who believed our message? So then, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message comes through preaching Christ. What a beautiful scripture to read, especially on this Communion Sunday. And we will partake in communion following the message, so please be prepared to join me. Do you remember the title of this section? Salvation is for all. Everyone who has ever lived or shall ever live is given the invitation to be saved. But saved from what? Saved from the wages of sin, as we read in Romans chapter 6, 23, or from death, which is the payment of sin. There are consequences to our actions of sin, as we all well know. When we know the word and the will of God, we will desire to do good and not evil. Sin, in other words. Because he, God, will lead our hearts. We all know when we are sinning, because we know right from wrong. God gives us the strength to do the right things in life, like obeying the law of our land. We obey the law even though it will not save us to glory. We do so not just to gain some relative peace, but because God instructs us in Romans 3 verse 31 to uphold the law. You know, we greatly benefit when we live our lives as pure as possible. Admittedly, we will all sin. But, we, but when we have Jesus as Lord and Savior, we can come to him and ask for forgiveness. And when we have the true intention not to sin again, he will forgive us. We reconcile ourselves to him, and he erases the sin from the page, so to speak. We start afresh. 
Only God can forgive us our sins. And only Jesus, through his death on the cross, can be our salvation when we believe in him and receive his gift of salvation. I love the book of Romans. And here in Romans chapter 3, verses 23 to 26, we read, Everyone, everyone has sinned and is far away from God's saving presence. But, I love that there's a but, but the free gift of God's grace, all are but but by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with him through Christ Jesus, who sets them free. God offered him so that by his death, he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. In the past, he was patient and overlooked people's sins. But in the present time, he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In this way, God shows that he himself is righteous and that he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. Now that is good news. So let's look again at the words that the Lord gave me on Thursday. We'll start with the word come. Come to the Father. Here in John chapter 14, verse 6, it reads, John answered him, Thomas, because that's who he was speaking with at the time. He said this to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Come, come to the Father. Believe. John chapter 14, verse 1. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. He was speaking to the disciples. Believe in God and believe also in me. And in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, we see these words. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. So come, believe. Ask. Ask for forgiveness through Jesus Christ. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 say this. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to be its judge, but to be its savior. Ask God to forgive your sins through Jesus Christ, and he will. Come, believe, ask, receive. Beautiful. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Tell us, for it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It is not a result of your own efforts, but God's gift, so that no one can boast about it. Come, believe, ask, receive, and be saved unto glory. Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14, read this way. You were at one time spiritually dead because of your sins, and because you were Gentiles without the law. But God has now brought you to life in Christ. 
God forgave us all our sins. He canceled the unfavorable record of our debts with its binding rules and did away with it completely by nailing it to the cross. Wow. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, we read, Christ himself carried our sins in his body to the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. It is by his wounds that you have been healed. Hence, we are saved unto glory. These words, come, believe, ask, receive, and be saved unto glory, are words of invitation. No wonder I get excited about the word of God and the promises contained within the Bible. Our salvation and forgiveness of sin are gifts we receive when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior thanking him for all he has done to reconcile us to the Father. Our salvation is in Jesus alone. Through him, we are saved to glory. It is a gift to all who will receive it. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. Have you received the gift? Are you saved unto glory? Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, if anyone is listening to this message today and does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that they will bow their head and pray with me now. Forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. I come to you through Jesus, who I believe is your Son, and he came to redeem me through his death on the cross. I come because I now believe, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart and forgive me of my sin. I believe that I am now saved because I have accepted Jesus and his gift of salvation. Amen. Well, I thank you for praying with me. If you did not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I pray that because you prayed that prayer and you meant it with your heart, that you will indeed Begin to live your life with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Your life will never be the same again. It will be beautiful. You will have trials and tribulations, as we all do. But having Jesus as Lord and Savior and having the Bible to go to, to help us live every day, is such a blessing. Now, as we come to the communion table, let us recall the Lord's Supper from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. Let us just lift a silent prayer to the Lord before we begin to partake in communion and ask God to give us a clean heart. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a piece of bread and he gave thanks to God. Thank you, Lord. He broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. 
Do this in memory of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in memory of me. This means that every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you, Lord, for this time together in communion. We are reminded of what Jesus did on the cross for us. And we are grateful that we are saved unto glory because of the gift of salvation that he brought. Thank you that everyone is invited and everyone has an opportunity to accept the invitation of coming to Christ, of believing in Christ, of asking for forgiveness <clears throat> and receiving that forgiveness and being saved unto glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> now today I would like to bring to you an, an old song that actually is out of the Psalms and it was written by William P. McKay <clears throat> and it's called Revive Us Again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the spirit of life who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my 
was written by Seth and Bessie Sykes and expresses our thanks beautifully to the Lord. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, come, believe, ask, receive, and be saved unto glory. Have a glorious week ahead, and please join me again next Sunday. Until then, Please follow the website and look for Spencer's Something to Think About tomorrow. And his Bible study on Tuesday will be in the Book of Judges, and it'll be Lesson 20. On Wednesday, I will have a writing on the site, and on Thursday, we will enjoy Peter's picks and Mike's writing. Finally, on Friday, Pastor Todd will send us a message. So I trust that uh, your week ahead will be filled with wonderful blessings from the Lord. May you share those blessings with those who are in your bubble. And may God bless you all richly. We'll see you again next Sunday. Thank you.